everyone, and welcome to Lying Around Connecticut with Carol and Harry. I am Carol Kearns. My husband, Harry Shu, is our co-host. Our mission for the show is twofold. To provide information about Connecticut Lions events and to showcase the many different organizations and causes that Lions support locally, regionally, and internationally. Harry? Good evening and welcome. Please consult our website at www.lions23b.org or your district spirit for more information on coming events. Hello everyone and welcome to Lion Around Connecticut with Carol and Harry. We are back at the New England Lions Council Winter Meeting. PDG Dave Roberts and I are in the Q&A part of our presentation, and you're going to hear some interesting information about Lions Clubs, how we're evolving in terms of cyber clubs and recruiting new members. So, on with the show. On Eva. So, for Cyber Lions, we've made the initial determination, because we talked about this last year, about getting a club going, and we've been working on this, because you have to have 20 members for... Lions, there's only 10 for Leo, but 20 for Lions. So we've been working to recruit the initial 20 people. Our current governor, Harry's successor, made the decision that to get started, this is going to be a district-wide club, so people can live in Hartford and Litchfield County. And I said, well, what if they live in you know, Texas or New Hampshire? Um, so I'm going to go recruit two from New Hampshire. <laughs> and um, he said that's fine, as long as they want to be Lions and they want to participate. So actually, two of our members live in Escondido, California, but they're members of the first family of Windsor, Connecticut. Go figure. When I was promoting this, recently I did an event out in San Diego because I was there on other business. And so I did an event and I invited people to come to it that might be interested in being Lions of the new Northwestern Connecticut Cyber Lions Club. So as we grow, we may want to have other cyber clubs within our district. We may want to have cyber branches that may or may not grow into traditional Lions clubs or cyber clubs. But even I mean, that's the same question you have for specialty clubs. Our, our two Nepalese clubs are chartered by the district, they're not chartered by a club. District 23B chartered both clubs. Well, so they have, they have to get into ND23 in order to start communicating with each other first or no? Nope. No, they're part of the district. You know, once they're chartered, they're part of the district just like any of our other some clubs. Yeah, Frank. Frank. I, I'm not sure if this one he's asking, but this is what's going through my mind. Is that okay. There's two parts to this. One is the actual administration of the club and who they answer to. Uh, we're also talking about the licenses for the webinar and the uh, go to meeting. And right now we have a shared license, so we're using it as best we can. But what's going to happen as you start to grow the audience and the participants for the electronic meeting, you're going to have to decide how many licenses will be adequate for your needs. And if you as a club think, hey, I want to have my own webinar go to meeting, then you would have to pay a separate license for yourself. Then you could share that if you had a branch club, if you had a Leo's club. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's what you were asking about or not, but there's two functions here. One is you don't necessarily have to create a Leo's uh, a new Leo's Club, um, and you, based on the webinar software that we have there, they could adopt their own software if they chose to. Conversely, if they wanted to use this software, you know, they didn't have to be a new club, they could be one of the oldest. What Harry and I are trying to do is plant seeds in your minds, because Harry got it immediately when I, as one of his lions, griped. I just can't believe we don't have, I came from a uh, technology company, I can't believe that we don't have these tools available. How can you continue to grow this district if we don't have modern tools to help us do that? 
he got it immediately and literally on his own went and championed it at the council level. And, and that's why it's worked. But again, if you want us, I live five miles from your border, I'm glad. I've actually been, we just did a specialty club workshop, LCI put on in Connecticut, and two folks came from 33S, yes. and they've already asked me to come up and speak in Massachusetts, so um, on specialty club. But we're glad to come up and speak on this, if you want, or anything, to help you kind of work through that. Because one of the things I have found is some people, I'm a 10-year lion, I just got my Chevron, and one of the things that I have found is some people have that traditional, we get together at 12, we eat lunch, we have our meeting, we do a four-point opening, you know, blah, blah, blah. That is not Lions Clubs International of the future. That's one model that works for some people, but there's so many different models in what you're seeing through North American Membership Initiative, what you're seeing through Cyber. There's all different ways to go at people, and like it or not, and I know I don't, um, with six kids, that times are a changing, and you've got to be able to go sometimes with that change and find something that works for everybody. Because again, at the end of the day, when you ask somebody that you think would make a good lion, you want them to be able to say yes. So have all the reasons to come overcome those no's. Right. Yeah, say, how do young people communicate today? No, no phone, right? Facebook is for most of us in the room. Yeah, for us. It's other types of social media, the Instagrams and everything else. So you know, we've got to make this available to young people if we're going to hope to attract them to line. Just to clarify one thing. You said the district charts are two of these clubs. But they're freestanding clubs. Yes. Okay. yes. Just like any other traditional club. Yes. So I think some people thought that the district was maintaining control. No, no. Yeah. They, they have their own officer yeah. board. Yeah. Yeah. Traditionally, when you fill out your application, you put down what club or two clubs are sponsoring that. Right. For Leo's, it has to be a club. It cannot be a district. We just bumped into that bus off. But for yeah. Lions clubs, a district could sponsor clubs because sometimes, it's like in Connecticut, you buy the gavel, the gong, and those mm -hmm. and the multiple buys the flags. And sometimes clubs just don't want to help lay that money right now. So in our district, we've made the determination that the district can sponsor a club if there's not a club willing to take on and, and that. And for these, the members come from all around our district and in some of our other districts. So it's, it's not even all the members are in District 23B. In but this, in that case, because they're all spread out, you know, no, one club doesn't want to assume responsibility, so it makes more sense for the district. And I'll have to tell you, too, it was kind of a political thing that the district governor wanted to make sure we weren't stepping on the toes because this new club is actually in a community where there's another Lions Club, and in this new Nepalese club's name is the name of a prominent city in the Connecticut. And so he went to the current club and said, hey, We've got 28 Nepalese Americans that want to form a new club on their own. And this established club said, that's great. We want to partner with them. We'll invite them to our events. We'll go to their events. And so when we had the charter night activity, they came to this phenomenal charter night event that we held at the temple in Newington. So you've got to make sure, and again, on the NAMI thing, you saw like, you know, who wants to be a North American Membership Initiative, um, you know, prototype um, district. You've got to make sure it's not just tools. You have to have the skills as a leader to make sure that with those tools, you're appropriately utilizing things in your area. <coughs> yes? So I think it's fantastic that they were accommodating, but what would you have done if they weren't? We would probably, at least in, in from my conversations with our current district governor, who is, and I mean this in a nice way, a very smooth talker. <laughs> um, um, he's not here. He's, he's not in the room, but it's being recorded, so I don't know who you're watching on this. And I know you're all going to run in, in um, Facebook. Right. Dave Roberts said you're a real smooth talker. I met that as a compliment. That's, that's, that's another thing we might edit for yeah. a little cat. <laughs> 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 if, if they weren't 
because one of the things under the New Voices Initiative, and thank you for the opportunity since I'm the New Voices Chair for Connecticut, <laughs> one of the things we're trying under New Voices is to find out reasons why people aren't joining Lions. And sometimes, like it or not, people don't feel comfortable. So New Voices this year, Dr. Troy's version of it, this year it's not only women, it's youth, LGBT, communities of diversity. And sometimes newer Americans have their vision of how they like to do things. For example, I'm the guiding lion for this new Nepalese club, and thank goodness they have a translator on Google because we use a Google meetup to communicate with each other, and I don't understand a word they're saying, so I put it into the translator to know what they're talking about. And that's how I learned they were doing this fundraiser for the Philippines, which I thought was just phenomenal. And so sometimes you gotta convince, and we're fortunate this other community, West Harvard, recognize the fact that they're probably not going to join with us anyways. And I think West Hartford also, even though it's a very diverse club, it's not that diverse. And so they felt that this was probably a good alternative. So it's really important to have the, like you know, um, through FDI, it's really important to have the ability to try to figure out how to get to yes and where to do a lot that. And, and our first club didn't take a town name. They are in front of the Greater Hartford Mount Everest Centennial Lions Club. Well, it's right. No, it's Hartford County. Hartford County. Yeah. Thank Everest you for Centennial Lions. Okay. Hartford County. Yes. And they just celebrated their third, second, third anniversary because I saw uh, HCEC. Yeah, I just saw it on Facebook because I know our district governor was actually now was their guiding lion then. And I know he got his award for being the guiding lion and turning into reports and stuff, and that was a while ago. So that club is thriving, and that club actually came to the chartering of this new club. And then we've now been approached by the temple where we held the chartering event. They would like to start a Nepalese club. But again, I thought, who knew? Because I, I, I bump into people from time to time, they say, there's no diversity in Connecticut. We all look like we all look. And it's like, there's a lot of diversity in Connecticut. You're just not looking or talking to the right people when you're in a restaurant or a store or your business or wherever. These people are all here, and many of them would like to belong and be part of a, the world's largest service organization. How are we doing on time? Excellent. Any last questions? Yes. Um, I just I don't know if anyone else here um, in reference to looking for a WebEx type of tool. Um, we we chose not to go to go to meetings because um, we had already invested quite a bit of money into um, internet communications with with a um, camera, a uh, hotspot um, that will work in different locations in Maine. Um, so we went with WebEx, which also has the same features and um, one license. Um, it's $13.50 monthly. That's for anybody else who's right. looking and might so, not be able to manage. Um, yeah, I, I think as Dave said, we're, we're not selling the, the tools so much. Right. I mean, we're yeah, selling yeah. the idea, the that's concept right. of using it. So if that works for you, that's Maine that's right. is doing something. Because again, our thing is we want everybody in New England to be doing something. So here's another resource for you if you want to pick our brains this weekend and find out you know, what has worked and what doesn't. Yes, John? Tia's, both of Tia's campaigns so far have been on WebEx. People have participated yeah. remotely yeah. in the cabinet. Yeah, and we have, have Facebook Live with that camera yep. in your out, so people can just click on their Facebook on our district Facebook and participate in the meeting as well. We're really Given our distances, it's, it's yeah. oh, for you, it's, yeah. It's nice. One of the things we do have to do is we have to probably change our policy game to allow voting if you're not in the room. Because right now, you 
yeah, not present. to be present to vote. We yeah. have to change the definition of present. Mm -hmm. yes. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's come up already. Somebody mm -hmm. has complained. Right. Right. But again, there's always solutions to challenges. And so, but it's great to hear Maine's doing something, Connecticut's doing something. So when I was district governor, I used to I uh, use free conference call uh -huh. for, uh, for for monthly meeting with the leadership. It's, it's not such a cabinet meeting, but for leadership every month I used to call, uh, I used to make the call through free conference call. I didn't have to pay anything, but it was, it was telephone, but it's still work, workable. I still do that. I, I used it for other organizations too. I was the president of the Connecticut Psychiatry Society, and I used to do the same kind of conference call every month. That. And again, we bought this for the <coughs> webinar training tool. The meeting is just an added benefit, but we really wanted to record training for right. people that just couldn't do it. So I just, I just, you got to keep in mind why we purchased the tool, and this was just an added benefit that came with that with that license. But there's lots of different solutions, and it's just great to hear that people are trying different things. Anything else? As a promoter, how do we uh, sell this? Uh, first thing they're going to ask, what's the cost? Yeah. Uh, so you heard the details. Yeah. Who's, uh, who's going to be setting these uh, programs up every month? You know, uh, your your uh, programs that you're talking well, about. Well, you know, I mean, you, you heard the cost. I mean, this, this one's $30, uh, you know. I heard that. Yeah. Right. But I, yeah. I was looking at another one over here, they were $100. For the participant, I mean, I, I don't think there's much to sell because it's really just a matter of joining the meeting, joining the webinar. It's, you, you need somebody who's going to be an administrator, and then you need the, the trainers. Those are the ones who really need the expertise in the tool. Other than that, I don't think there's a sell at, at all. It's just something, I mean, the sell, the sell is just to make it available to people. You need an administrator to be in charge, but, but there's no... So, like in our multiple, I don't think Harry's going anywhere, so he'll be the license holder. So as long as future councils vote to fund this project, and at least in my district, I'm not planning on going anywhere, so as long as the governor each year asks me, I know that at least one, and hopefully the second one sitting here in the next two years, will continue having me, the theory, be the point of contact since we've got the experience. So I don't think we're going away. So, yes, Susan, last question. We have um, a bunch of um, multiple districts that have joined committees for um, 501c3s, and they meet once a month. And some of the participants are visually impaired, so they can't get to meetings, and other ones live too far away to get to meetings. So this would be a great way. Perfect. And if they everybody pitched in for the funding, um, the multiple district committees and the multiple district and the two or all the districts, the price becomes reasonable. Because they don't all meet on the same day anyway. Okay. Well, Harry and I were excited because of Hillary's passion in asking us to do this. And so, and I think we enjoyed putting the presentation together over the Christmas holiday. <laughs> and um, but we're here if you have questions. And we hope when you go back to your state and your multiple in your district that you say, hey, I got a really great tidbit out of New England Lions Council. Let's have a chat. If you get any pushback, if you can contact either of us, we'll be glad to help you figure out how to get to yes. With that, thank you thank very you much. So much. <laughs> On behalf of uh, NALC, thank you both PDGs for their presentation. I think I want to point in our This is uh, I okay. candidate John Yu from the great state of Maine. Uh, first, I want to thank all of you for being here. And I want to thank this organization for its endorsement. That happened last fall. It was wonderful. I've now been endorsed by all sorts of people. And I'd like to thank the Vermont Lions. I just received their written endorsement this noon. And that was wonderful. A lot of people say, why does it become important in New England to have an ID? Well, one thing, 
Northern Lions need a voice at Lions Club International. And for over 50 years, all but one year, we've had a voice there. And even that one year, Otto Trevino had been a board appointee, so we still had our voice at the table, even though it wasn't a voting voice. An ID can help the Lions of New England get quality convention speakers. Until Haynes died, he was scheduled to be in New Hampshire in a couple of weeks. Um, Brian Sheehan is coming to Connecticut in a few weeks after that. I mean, you don't get executive, two executives into one area if you don't have a sitting ID that is prepared all of that. Your ID can help promote lines throughout the New England area. One of the things that IDs can do because they're the idea of an international organization, they can use the press. If, if I become ID and I'm in your district, please have the press there. I will gladly help the district to the press. Give the press somebody who is from away from the international board promoting the lines in your district. There's no reason not to do that. You can do that now with the speakers you have coming in. The other thing is, and this is very important, having an ID will help you facilitate your training programs. You can get people to the rallies, the alleys, the alleys. We need to keep those programs going. There are some parts of the world that don't see the purpose of all of that training because they have their own internal trainings. We benefit greatly from every one of our lines who goes to the regional line, the emerging line, and the advanced lines training program. Those are the people who are going to replace us along the way. And as any of you who have ever been in my training sessions know, if you fail to plan for your successor, you have failed. So keeping these training programs going is important for an ID, and it's important for New England to have this. The IDs can also help because those people who have been through this training can then become trainers. They can, can become presenters as a forum. You don't become a presenter at a forum unless somebody has introduced you to the program chair of the forum and let them know what it is that this person is capable of doing. That is another great way for getting us moving forward as a region. <coughs> IDs hopefully will, they show up in your district and motivate your lines to go home and do what they already know they're supposed to be doing. But face it, you're here. You're motivating lines. You know what your job is. A good speaker will get you enthused to go home and do even more. But hopefully the ID becomes a role model for all lines. Sometimes I wonder about my ability to be your role model because this picture circulating and you wearing a red nose. <laughs> I'm looking for it now. I do it again. But at least that's a fundraising nose. <laughs> and your IDs can help your district governors and their leadership teams when there are problems. We don't want to talk about our problems. But every now and then there are problems that come up in every district. And sometimes having an ID available to balance things often. Because if I don't know the answer when I'm there, I do. That everyone's listening to that. That I will know where to go to get an answer. Or I'll have other ideas around me that I can ask. Have you ever had this problem in your district? So one of my personal goals, I want to work at the board level to make sure that what you need to work in the field is there for you at Lions Club International. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. We all heard complaints again today about the lack of response on the Lions computer system. Mm -hmm. But the search engine does not work, and we all know it does not work. They're working on it, and we've heard that answer for three or four or five years. The other thing that I want to do is be a motivator. When I have been a presenter, I don't ever believe that I'm teaching somebody something new from the audience. I believe I'm there to motivate them to do what they know they have to do and maybe give some new ideas about how to do it. And that's what I even kind of do when I'm out on the trail. As 
in a national directory. You have to bring these greetings to the president. You have to bring these greetings to the lines of the national. And you have to promote the programs to people in the field. You also get to help the Lions Club International Executive Committee behind the scenes. There are things that are going on that you and I as Lions don't necessarily know about. Uh, there are issues in certain districts where my skills as a lawyer, a trial lawyer, and a roster mediator of the courts are going to probably be calling the claim if I don't know I've been told already about a couple of things that I might have to face. That is some of the things that nobody knows what the directors are doing because those are, hopefully they stay behind the scenes. Unlike one year in Canada where a club that I was intimately acquainted with did not have women in its club, even though they received millions and millions of Canadian dollars to build senior housing. When that hit the press, when they declined to accept the application, you can imagine in Canada that that caused the row and went coast to coast. That had to be resolved, and some of them stepped in to resolve it. And they now accepted it. <laughs> and I won't tell you what city or what place. But those are the things that I want to be able to do as your director. And I say your director because I'm endorsed by all of them right now. And I want to be your voice. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. And we know you make it you do a fantastic. I passed over one of my favorite, favorite people here. Sorry. I was telling Joyce. You come back. I was telling Joyce this morning. When I was in D.C. six years ago and went to Boxborough, I'm sure a lot of you have been in D.C. and have Boxborough. Um, she was doing, I met her for the first time, she was doing CST and I thought, wow, what a powerhouse she is. So she's a very special person. Thank you for helping out with the ID. Probably all know that we have a regional development specialist. I'm trying to think of the development. Uh, Anne Schuler with us today. She will be speaking later this afternoon about the campaign 100, and then she'll be with us for the banquet, and she will be speaking about the model site. So um, I'm going to have her come up and make a few comments after lunch. We're going to eat lunch because I'm sure it's ready. So it's going. <laughs> and I want to give her all the time she wants. Hello again, everyone. And we'd like to congratulate our good friend, John Uni, who is the endorsed candidate for international director. He made some great comments, Carol, didn't he? He certainly did. We really like him. And his wife, Lion Carol. Yes. So come back next week. As you heard, we will have a special guest from Lions Clubs International. But that'll do it for this episode of Lion Around Connecticut with Carol and Harry. Bye now. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed our show this evening. Tune in next week for another Lion Around Connecticut with Carol and Harry. Good night. Bye-bye.